Today, we are going to learn about Pacific tree frogs and horsetails. And who doesn't love a frog? So I want to show you some pictures of some frogs here. So this is our Pacific tree frog. You can see it's an amphibian, and so it has a, a kind of bumpy skin. But this is how really tiny it is. Look, this is actually a finger that's here. And it's really, really tiny. So I have some frogs in the background, just so you can get a feel for these awesome creatures. This is what they sound like when they're looking for friends. The, the sound back here, and they create this really big airbag to make the deep sounds that they have. And then I just thought you'd like to see this one here. And look, I even have a cute one. We're not drawing this, but it is cute. It is cute. There, oh good. So. I just want you to be able to get your goodies for doing this drawing right now. So what you're going to need is an eraser, a pencil, and a sharpie if you have it. So I'm going to turn off our creatures here just for a second while you go get your, your pieces there. Good. And what I'm going to be doing is... Um, I'm going to be using a charcoal pencil. The other thing that I would like to have you have is some kind of color that we'll be using. I'm using watercolored pencils. You can use crayons or colored pencils. Yeah, or even, look, you can even use watercolor for this. There we go, even watercolor is fine. Uh, and, you know, and they're just beautiful, just in black and white, too. There. And we're going to be drawing them on a horsetail. Now, I have a very young horsetail here. They can get much thicker than this. But you can see they're unique. And, and the thing about these that are so interesting is that when you open up the middle, when you, when you just kind of open them up, Sort of like here, let's see if we can open this up a tiny bit. It ha it's got, it's like a straw. It's kind of like a straw here. And um, it's, it's just an open plant that lives, it likes to live in the water or very near the water. So this is what we're going to do. Let's start by just putting a, a dot in there, okay? And so what we're going to be doing is some helping lines to start with. So I'm gonna get us some more of our creatures here. There, if we can here, let's get some more creatures going here. There, where's our creatures? There we go, good. So with this, we're going to give it something to stand on here. So let's give it this branch right here, branch here, big branch. Remember these are the helping lines. They're just gonna go away, okay. So let's see if we can get this one here. This is, this is, look, 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 look. I gotta show you this, look, 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 look. look. See how that looks? What is doing that? Oh, well, I hope you caught that. That was pretty funny. Okay, so anyway, we have these lines here going here. And we also want to give it another uh, branch to hold on to because we are kind of having it stretch its leg over here. And then I actually want over here, I want to actually show us how the mature one looks, which would be mature when the frogs come around, not when the tadpoles are here. Tadpoles are spring, frogs are a little bit later, like fall. So we're just gonna do like kind of a corn dog up here and then a long one here. And then we have this one here. And the next thing we're going to do is, I want you to actually, it's sort of like a square. It'll kind of help if you do a square or an oval that goes kind of sideways like that. Do you see perpendicular sort of like that? Or an oval will do, like that, oval. Either way, either way, it's all, it's all works. Different, different shapes work. We want more up at the top than at the bottom here. Good, and that this is perfect opportunity. We're gonna have eyeballs. An eyeball, right? Eyeball, eyeball. And then it actually kind of goes straight across like that. Kind of interesting like that, right? Right? And then we have a, a separate eyeball here, make them pretty big. And then we're gonna come out like this for the face. Out for the face. There, out for the face like that. Good. And then we're gonna come up over here and we're gonna give it some some hands as it were. It's a little free. Now I'm only drawing helping lines here. So I have a helping line. They actually have 
four, but you will probably only see three of their digits, their little feet there, and then like this. There we go. So we have that. And then this one, the same here. It's holding on. Here it is. It's holding on to all of this here. So we're just going to come up over here and give it one, two, three, and we'll get to, we'll broaden that out. These are just helping lines. Yeah. Oh, good. And so the next thing that we're going to do, we're actually going to be giving it it sort of has a bottom here that'll be sort of like that. And we're going to give it its leg, leg, and then have its feet here. So we have leg, out, leg, leg, and then the feet will be here holding on to this. We'll make that a little bit fatter. One, two, three, like that. There. It's just rough. Very rough. Very rough. And then this one here is actually going to be up on the other side over here. So we could just give it little feet holding onto it just for the other side over here. That's it. So the next thing I want you to do, let's go to its little face. And the little face got little nostrils, right? Really broad mouth to catch those bugs. And then over here, see here, it has a very distinctive look across its eyes and actually across the back, but we are not seeing the back, okay? So we're just going to kind of go like that, right? Good. Now's the time that we're actually going to take our pencils and outline this better. This is just helping lines, right? So we're going to come back over here, and here's my eye. They don't have ears. Well, they do have ears, but you don't see them, right? They do have ears. Of course they have ears. And then come back over here and over here. Now, these are just sticks for the, the, the hand, so to speak. We're going to put them for two sides. One side, here comes another one over here. Another side over here like this. Over here like this. And then back up over there. And then we're going to come back over here for this same thing. I'm going to finger, two sides of the fingers, finger finger. Now I'm using charcoal so you can actually see this, but it's a little messier than your pencil, right? So we're going to come back over here and we're going to go whoop like this and then finger, 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 and come back over here and then over here. But you're really not going to see this other part of the leg. If you want to give it a little bit, you can here. But I'm actually putting one, two, just three. I did four, but just three, like it was holding on to that um, branch from the other side. Right, right? So we have that. And then we just go back to our eyes. I have an eye, and then an eye, and then the iris in there. So I have one circle, two circles, and a little baby circle. I, I'm just going over this. I will be going over it with the Sharpie, but I also just want it to be really clear when you're doing that. Now, I want you to look at these. You see here, it has a design on them. So we're going to be putting that design on the horse tails. Now, horse tails are the oldest plants. They're unbelievable. Dinosaurs. There were some version of these were here during the dinosaur time. Um, they're really unusual um, because they uh, reproduce. They don't have seeds. They have spores, kind of like mushrooms have spores, right? Right. So they reproduce with spores, and they also spread underground. Um, with big root systems too. So they, they kind of have a few ways. That's why they've been here a really long time. So this is a very good place for us to stop and start with a Sharpie. If you do not have a Sharpie, go back yet again with a dark, a black pencil or, or even a black pen of any kind. So, but hopefully it has a fine point, okay? So I'm gonna come back over here and come back over. Let's see. Um, let's see. I just want to make sure you can see what I'm doing here. Oh, this is giving me a hard time because um, because it has um, uh, it's catching up in the in the charcoal. But let's see if we can just do it like this. We got this. Look at this. Okay, there. So we're gonna come back over here to our hands. Hands, hands. We're just going back over where we put the pencil. We're going to ignore all the helping lines. They were just there for a short while. Going to come back over here. Eyeballs. There we are. Yeah. 
Oh, and who doesn't love a frog? So I got one for you. You know how animals have names for groups, right? So they have like a herd of deer, right? You know, or a, a pack of dogs or wolves like that, right? But a group of frogs is called an army of frogs. Isn't that funny? <laughs> an army of frogs. So let me put a little bit over here. There we go. One, two, three. This is just a suggestion that the foot is over here. Just sort of a suggestion back behind there. So remember, we have our eyeballs there. So one thing about um, Pacific tree frogs are also called chorus frogs, and you could hear the noises that they make. They're really loud. In fact, Hollywood uses the sounds of Pacific um, coast or Pacific chorus frog, Pacific tree frogs, uh, for whenever they want to have a sound like a typical frog. Right, this is the sound they pick. This is what they consider a typical frog sound. After all, it, it, it's a frog, but they're very noisy. And you saw why, because of the big air sacs that they have. Now, here's a case where I have overlap. I have a lot of overlap. I wanted to do the foreground one first. Okay, so I'm going to do this one first, because I don't want my lines to accidentally go through. So here's my foreground. There. Okay. That And now I can come back over here to do this, just to make sure I don't accidentally mess up with that one there. Good. And this is also in the background, so I like to do foreground first, at least in theory, and then background after that. So here we go. And it's true with the horse tails. They, they kind of fall on each other. They're very tall, and they kind of fall on each other. And the frogs can actually crawl up these things because of their kind of suction cups, their little pads on their feet help them do that. Now, the head of these is spores. They're spores. I'm going to show pictures later, but look, their head is like spores. It's called a cone, or it's like a cone. And it doesn't have flowers. It's more like if you look underneath a mushroom uh, in the gills, you're going to find little tiny spores. This is a spore plant, which is very, very, very unusual. But it obviously works because it's been here forever. Like dinosaurs. Think dinosaurs. Ancient, ancient. So the next place here... I'm going to have a harder time with this than you are because I have looks already made a big of a mess because of my charcoal, which I like, but it's, it's messy. I want you to erase. I'm going to do my very best to erase the charcoal, which is tricky, but I'm going to. I'm going to do that because we actually want a, a clean place to put our um, color into, right? So especially the frog, we want that frog to be really nice really nice. So these are very tiny frogs. They live really in a lot of areas, but especially along the coast of California and up, up, up to Canada, uh, even then, and many other places too. And they like to be where it's wet. Um, and you know, I know you probably already know, you probably even have tadpoles in your school. Um, so they, they lay eggs, and then the eggs turn into tadpoles, and then the tadpoles grow into frogs. So it takes a little while for that to happen. Uh, but this is the frog stage. And it's called a tree frog, but I already said they're not in trees. Um, I think it's because they can climb a little bit. So this is a perfect place to stop right now because I want you to go get your colors, okay? And I'm going to come back, and we're going to do videos of tadpoles. Awesome. Nice job. Okay, I hope you came back with some colors that we can use for our frog. But right now, I want to show you this awesome video that this young Those child made. Fish. Look at this. Making them internally. Yeah. The tadpoles are feeding ferociously on algae. Wow. Day six, not much change. Tadpoles continue to feed well. It's day eight, and you can see tadpoles are developing well. They have frog eyes, and through their transparent bodies, you can see their new body parts forming. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. By day ten, 
Growth continues. Day 15, and due to overcrowding, I have moved some of the tadpoles into a nearby outdoor tank. I used collected rainwater. Tadpoles were unaffected by the move. I'm using balls of algae I've grown to feed the tadpoles. I'm also feeding them boiled, then frozen outer iceberg lettuce leaves. My local supermarket is happy to give me their waste lettuce. <laughs> Isn't that great? Oh my goodness, you got to love that. So what I want us to do now, I want you to actually study this. Study this, um, this frog because we're going to be adding those colors and we're going to be um, making this uh, look like a Pacific tree frog there. So I'm hoping that I have a little sound here for us that we could do here so we can listen. Here we go. There we are. Oh, good. There. So what we're going to do here. There. Let's hope that this is a good one here. So I'm actually just gonna do this right now. Here we are, look. So I'm gonna put some greens in here because it's kind of greenish, right? It's very green. Um, and as the, from the picture, you see there's also some dark blotches, but most of those are on their backs. The, the front part, the tummy is more, it's much lighter is much lighter. So while I have this green in hand, I'm also going to do a tiny bit of green here. And we will be showing you how you make the um, stems or the branches they're on look different than the frog because they're, the, they're not the same. And actually, by the time the frogs are born, after the tadpoles um, are born and they become frogs, it's fall. And when you look at these, um, at these uh, horsetails. Uh, th right now it's spring and they're very, very green, but they tend to get a little bit darker uh, in the fall. So I'm going to be adding a little bit more color in here that will create a darker color because it's not the same as a frog, even though one of the things that frogs do really well, and here it's darker in here, one of the things frogs, uh, Pacific tree frogs do really well um, is that they actually can camouflage, they actually can change their color, uh, kind of like a, a, a chameleon, only uh, not quite as dramatically. So they can go from greens to browns to light greens to dark greens and um, uh, and change their color according to the light and the time of the year, um, and, and so that they are a uh, blend better in the habitat. There, we give it a little of that. A little bit more here. Now, one of the things that, oh, a lot of dark up here, a lot of dark, because this is the spores. There we go. Now, one of the things about the tummy, the tummy area is lighter, so I'm actually gonna come in here and do a lighter color. Now, you could also be doing crayons. You could do other things that will, um, you do the same technique, you're just layering, you're layering, you're layering, um, so that um, you get a really rich color. So this is a blackish color, so I'm actually gonna, put a black in here and I want to leave a little bit of white around the eyes just a tiny bit of white around the eyes and then the outside of the eyes is more like a yellowish okay right back in here out this part here right here right here right here now in this particular case even though here's here's this frog here and then I want you to look at the, how this muted you know, different colors in here and then there's this one here and it's very light here and the paws are a little bit light so we could do either one so I might just take this and decide to make this a little bit darker in here kind of blotchy it's blotchy it's kind of blotchy looking, so we're just going to do a little of that like that, blotchy, blotchy. There we go. And then I might mix it with a little yellow. Yep, I might do that, you know, because it does have a, a mixture of colors. The back has more coloring than the front. There. You know what we forgot? Um, I forgot to do it. Look, I want you to see it has this kind of this... Um, a uh, bumpy look, even here, you can see this here, this bumpy look, I forgot to do that. I, I'm gonna go back and do that. You could do this with a pencil or your Sharpie if you have one and give it that textural look. 
because uh, that's what amphibians have. There we go. We did that. That wasn't so bad. There. And then I'm going to add some more color. It's all about adding color. There we go. So I want, so one of the things about Pacific tree frogs, I mean, in addition to the fact that they're Hollywood stars, uh, that they use their sounds for all these movies whenever you want to hear a frog, they use these frogs for that, right? Um, and in addition to the fact that they eat insects when they get older, when they're babies they eat algae, uh, which is really important. And the algae does grow, uh, for example, on the, the, um, of the horsetails, uh, and they'll just kind of scrape the horsetails to get the algae off. Just like that a little kid had, uh, they were eating the, the boiled lettuce that he had grown algae on. He'd grown the algae on that. I thought, oh my gosh, that's so sweet. So here we go, we have this. And so the next step I want to do here is just to make sure that we have enough darkness up in here, a little bit of dark here, and then in this case, we're going to be adding water, okay? I'm not gonna suggest that we do a background. I mean, if you wanted to do a background, you could You could do it with watercolor or chalk. If you did watercolor, you'd wanna put water back here and then maybe very light, not a heavy, thick watercolor on that so the frog stands out. Or chalk, no water. And you just put a very light background. But I think this is fine the way this is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some water here and I'm going to be using just just plain water because these were watercolored pencils there. And so another thing I wanted to talk about really quick was that these horse tails are also called scouring rushes. And one of the reasons is that you literally can kind of fold them up on themselves and you can um, actually clean pots and pans with them. Yeah, they have kind of a, a, silica, a silicate in there, and it's very rough, and you can clean pots and pans with that. And so people do, throughout history, have used uh, horse tails for uh, special kind of medicines, um, but we don't do that right now, but we do appreciate that these are beautiful plants. They've been there a long time, and frogs are really happy with them. So look at what you did. You did a Pacific tree frog and horsetails, and here's our horsetails here. There, oh, good job.